Good morning, folks. I'll make this quick because the second half of the video is the real juice. Cosmic ray density leveled off before it got to the highest mark I've seen, holding steady. Yesterday, I tried to identify a very weak CME impact, raising density, speed, and temperature, but not by much. Perhaps you've seen that NOAA includes a spiral for speed as well as one for density. You might recall we expected the coronal hole stream to impact just as the dark coronal hole was in the southern hemisphere. So is the strong yellow wind. It has indeed made impact. If not for the different scales on the left, one might confuse this rise with yesterday's, but we're over 500 kilometers per second versus 350 yesterday. It's causing more instability than the CME impact. Plasma is penetrating. The multi-line resonance was replaced by a strong baseline frequency. The GOES magnetometer took a dive along with the electron count. KP index hit 4 briefly and couple that disturbance with tomorrow's full moon. We have a minor quake watch before next week's bigger one. The sun is quiet. Got a few things we're watching, but I'd like to get to the good part. A few words on our recently observed Earth-facing quiet. The sun has not really been active for a while. Now, we did break government forecasted high activity marks in November, but since then have been sporadic the last 12 months with modest sunspot numbers here belying a complete lack of flares we need to expand our atmosphere. All the experts are confirming that this is being followed by a pitifully weak solar cycle. X flares and CMEs have been moderate at high times, and even those have been few. Even now, the flares aren't happening. Back in 2008, the deep solar minimum was cause for NASA to reassure us everything was okay, describing the last little ice age during one of the greatest minimums recorded, the Maunder minimum. It's important to note at the bottom that they claim there's no cause to worry because they were already seeing the sunspots for the next maximum. Those who have been following our star know it was a tease and the sun went way lower. In 2009, National Geographic tied the extended low back to that mini ice age and the Maunder minimum. Nearly four years later in 2013, solar max on our doorstep and not much has changed. Looking at NOAA's flare and radio blackout scale, they list how many of each flare we should get each cycle. We have not had any X20s or even X10s this cycle. We are supposed to get somewhere around 175 X flares. Given how close we are to the max, we should have had a few dozen at least. For those who don't like Wikipedia, it's good for some things, and their chart of this cycle's flares is flawless. I know, I've been checking. There have been 15 X flares so far, well below average. There are supposed to be about 300 M5s and higher, and thousands of M flares in general. We've had just the bare minimum. I imagine most of you don't know this book, but for those that do, I bet you're awake now. This is the Maunders book, that couple team of scientists for whom the great minimum was named. And in this book, they tell a story of the sun that couldn't be more relevant to our discussions. They noticed a period of time where the earth-facing sunspots seemed to disproportionately decay from the sun. You got the past shots of my testimony, and I'll ask for verification of the same from commenters with a tenure here to know as much. Those new here should click the link directly below the video. We've got some slightly better observational tools than the Maunders had. I have included a link to a free copy of this book below as well. Now, For reasons unknown to the Maunders, NASA, and myself, the sun began doing its normal jig a few decades later. I will simply remind everyone that the Mayans predicted no doomsday, but merely a new cycle of the sun. And their time frame, one Bakhtun, is 394 years, putting us in the period of sketchy, pathetic minimums, like the one we're in now, that led right into the Great Maunder Minimum. NASA's recent stepping to the plate with a solar climate driver contribution also contained genuine worries that we may actually be set to enter another mini Maunder event. The last 36 years have seen the sun's magnetism weaken according to Stanford. We're not getting as far off the center line. That link I mentioned beneath this video should prove to you that Earth's magnetism is changing as well. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.